and I see life as a series of boxing metaphors because again, I've spent I mean, that's literally your, it's over, a huge part of your life. Yeah. Makes, over three quarters sense. of my life, over three quarters of my life, I've spent boxing. I love you, Bob. No matter how many times I hit you, you never hit back. is subjective, meaning that interpretation is up to the individual experiencing that art. That being stated, the Rocky franchise is objectively the best and most inspirational sports film franchise ever conceived. Hello everyone, this is Tom Lazoric, and in this episode of Fitness and Film, we are talking the Rocky franchise. And please do stay tuned till the end for a very special guest appearance. In a lot of ways, the original Rocky film from 1976 really helped to jumpstart the notion of an underdog sports story. And not only was it one of the first, but it remains arguably the best. It really set the standard, a standard which has not been tampered with since, right down to the heart, the music, the montage, and the message. And everyone knows if you want to fly, you got to drink raw eggs. This guy's sick, just as nature intended. Cheers. I don't know where this came from. It's nasty fucking eggs. Blech. Okay, let that. And if you do happen to need fitness motivation, just pop in a Rocky movie. And I do not want to hear any Rocky IV slander. Yes, that movie may just be one giant training montage, but what's wrong with that? The movies clearly emphasize the sport and art of boxing. But that does not mean that it's only going to be inspirational for those with boxing aspirations. Or even those with just fitness aspirations. Rocky showed us that the underdog was real. And the underdog can prevail as long as the underdog believes in that fact. Most of us have been an underdog at one point or another in our lives. So many lessons can be gained from the Rocky films. Personally, the franchise first inspired me in terms of how it showcased the physiques. Especially in regards to Rocky 3 and 4 with Sylvester Stallone and Carl Weathers physiques. But as time went on, what would stand out to me far more was the depiction of the athletic pursuit, the grind behind it, the desire to succeed in your goals, what it takes, how it can influence your personal life and perception of the world around you going forward. For those who are less familiar with the franchise, it all began in 1976 with my pal and yours, Sylvester Stallion. I mean Sylvester Stallone. From a certain point of view, the movie was semi-autobiographical. No, Sylvester Stallone was not a club boxer from Philly, but there are more parallels than meets the eye. Written by and starring Stallone, the first movie was by far and away his first big hit. And not just his first big hit, but basically his first hit altogether. Sylvester Stallone, I'd like to thank you for sharing your dream of Rocky with us and for giving a performance that has enriched all our lives. <laughs> Prior to the film, Stallone was living a pretty poverty-stricken life. As a child, he was kicked out of various schools, and in high school, he was voted the most likely to end up in the electric chair. Yikes. Yeah, I don't think they had those categories in the yearbooks anymore. And when he entered the world of showbiz, he struggled quite a lot. But he did not give up on his dream. Even while living in ramshackle apartments with no clear sign of success in sight, Stallone drew real-life inspiration for the film after a 1975 championship fight between one of the most famous people in the world, Muhammad Ali, and an underdog club fighter named Chuck Wepner. So here we have art imitating life, imitating art, imitating life, or something like that. Stallone was inspired by a real life underdog boxing story, which then inspired the rags to riches story, Rocky, which ended up taking Stallone from a rags to riches sort of situation himself. Obviously the film would spawn a franchise. The first film detailed the initial struggle and rise to prominence. The second film detailed Rocky's handling his newfound fame and fortune. In the morning, I splash it on, and it makes me smell mainly. Smell mainly? Uh, cut! <laughs> smell manly? Can you read that, Rock? The third film, and my personal favorite, focused on how star power can be detrimental to success, as well as how old enemies can become friends. 
fourth film, again, is basically one giant training montage. But it also shows the friendship, loyalty, and determination built within athletic pursuits. The fifth film is my personal least favorite, and it more or less details Rocky's retirement as well as some of the darker aspects of the boxing scene. This is a dirty business. It's full of these, these thieves and gangsters, you know, and, they, and they, 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 they promise every good young fighter who comes along, they promise them the world, and they, 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 and they, they suck them dry, and they leave them when they worth nothing, they leave them in the gutter broke, Tom. That's the way this business is run. That movie basically caused Rocky to go dormant, from 1990 all the way up until 2006 when we got Rocky Balboa, which was a beautiful return to form. That film showcased Rocky's coming out of retirement and how he would deal with being an aged fighter. The franchise also spawned sort of an offshoot franchise, sort of a spin-off franchise in Creed's 1 and 2. Two films that I absolutely adore, but we're not going to focus on those films at all in this video. Those are movies for another day. For this video, we're going to be looking at the Rocky films exclusively. From movie to movie, the goals would evolve. The physique changed, the opponent changed, and the training changed. In the first couple of Rocky films, he appeared far stockier. He had a bit more body fat, and his physique reflected what you would expect from fighters at that time. And the physique also made a lot more sense given the fitness and nutrition information available in the late 70s. But then we entered a new age, a post-pumping iron age, the age of Schwarzenegger, the age of the 80s action hero. What would follow would be a new standard for what's considered to be an impressive physique. And nobody embodied that better outside of Schwarzenegger than Sylvester Stallone. The body transformation between Rocky 2 and 3 is very hard to deny, and the subsequent Rocky films would follow suit. To achieve this transformation and gain the resources he would need going forward, Sylvester Stallone trained with the late and great bodybuilding legend Franco Colombo, shown here lifting a small automobile with a relative ease. For this new physique goal, Stallone was quoted as saying things such as, I wanted to get as lean as possible. I'd go for a long morning cardio, which usually consisted of jogging or swimming. Then I'd do about 18 rounds of sparring in the ring for Rocky. And then I'd hit the gym for about two more hours. With the help of Columbo, it was very clear that Stallone was going to succeed in his goals. But Stallone on his own is an animal. A caged beast just waiting to be set free and ready to show the world what he's made of. Which is likely a ton of raw eggs. In regards to training with Stallone, Columbo has stated things like, he's in a Achiever. He never sits back and waits for things to happen. He's the one out there making them happen. As well as, training was never a problem. Sly was very competitive and easy for me to motivate. We all know Stallone is a driven man. I mean, he's still training into his 70s. Sure, he might have had a little help from outside substances, but performance enhancing drugs, they don't do the workouts for you. As far as the training showcased in the movies themselves, there was a lot of push-ups, including clapping and one arm, running, sprinting, jump rope, swimming, a lot of core and ab work, calisthenics and compound lifting, as well as a lot of less conventional stuff like dancing, chicken chasing, chopping trees and sawing wood. And of course, there was also a ton of boxing specific work, like training with bags or meats as well as sparring and things like that. One of my favorite things showcased in the movies, though, is Rocky performing a dragon flag, which I actually have a tutorial for on my channel. Check it out. The training in the film is incredibly versatile and showcases a bunch of different training methods. And honestly, Stallone's real-life approach was not that different than what was seen in the movies. Primarily, there was a ton of traditional bodybuilding work in the gym, which involved a lot of high-intensity resistance training and high-intensity circuit training and things like that, as well as a ton of cardio and boxing. Stallone actually took things so far in Rocky IV that he actually damaged his heart while performing a tricep extension with an absurdly heavy weight. And production was halted because of it. Stallone actually might be just as much an athlete as he is an actor. But what about his nutrition? I mean, that is arguably half the equation, right? Well, the dietary practices, especially for Rockies 3 and 4, were quite bizarre and even kind of dangerous. He allegedly got his body fat down to like 2.9% in Rocky 3, which is utterly bogus because he would have been dead. Bogus. But needless to say, he was exceptionally lean in that movie. For those who are unaware, body fat measurements are very hard to be accurate with. I don't know what his body fat actually was. Perhaps Coach Greg can lend us his laser eyes? Texas scans are not accurate. This is the holy grail of body fat testing. No, it's not. My freaking eyeballs are the holy grail of freaking body fat testing. But the bottom line is he was dangerously, unsustainably low in body fat. According to the medium.com, Stallone has stated that I only ate very small portions of oatmeal cookies made with brown rice, a couple of scoops of tuna fish, and about 25 cups of coffee per day. This drink, I like it. I know, that's great, right? Another! I may have looked pretty good on the outside, but inside, 
it was a very dangerous thing to do. But I wanted that movie to be about change, how people have to adapt to different challenges, because if they don't, they will be conquered. Similarly, the dieting for Rocky IV was utterly absurd and very unnecessary by today's standards. I was so unhealthy, I even went through a period where all I ate was burnt toast, said Stallone. I looked great for a little while, and it's probably my best physique in Rocky IV, but what you didn't see on camera is that I was quite literally running my body into the ground, and you can't live like that. Perhaps if Coach Greg's cookbooks were around in the 80s, he wouldn't have had all these issues. Buy my freaking cookbook! And I'm out. But thankfully, the Sylvester Stallone of modern times is a bit more reasonable. These days I've learned how to look after myself and keep on top of my nutrition without all the crazy stuff I used to do. And that's definitely the approach I'd advise other people to take. Above all else, be healthy. By the 1990s when Rocky V came out, Stallone was training and dieting smarter, not harder. This is likely due in part to the furthering education on exercise science and nutrition. Back in the 1990s, I began to train what I consider to be more effectively. I really got my science and nutrition nailed down. I was in the gym less, but growing more. Stallone did a lot of amazing things with his body prior to figuring out what really works best. Fitness does not have to result in legitimate suffering. Training should be challenging, but fun. And your diet should be effortless, but healthy. Going forward, this approach likely shaped his performance and training for movies to come, all the way up from Rocky Balboa and beyond. I myself have experienced training various martial arts and other combat sports, but I'm in no way an expert, and I'm certainly not an expert on boxing. So, I have a very special guest, as I mentioned earlier in the video. He is a fellow YouTuber known as Not Dead Yet. over to my interview with this fine gentleman and figure out a little bit more about the Rocky films as well as boxing in general. I'm talking to him right now. He says he's joining. Whoa. Hello. Whoa. Can you hear me? How's everything? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Nice background, dude. That's thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I, oh my thank goodness. You, thank this, you. This is so exciting. I am this is amazing. Yeah, no, it's really, really interesting. I'm, I like again. This is the first time I've ever collaborated with someone like this, so this will be a lot of fun. So, question number one is: Tell mm. me a little bit about yourself, and like include, you know, both your experience with boxing as well as just like more about you as a person in general. Kind of what you're about, you know? Okay, yeah. My well, my experience in boxing, I have. A, I've been doing it since I was five. Uh, I got into it uh, as a kid. I got into karate as a kid because I was picked on and I wanted to kind of be a little bit tougher. Uh, what it got me into boxing specifically is that I actually have a long line of boxers in my family. My father did boxing. He wasn't a professional or anything, but he did it. And then I have uh, professional boxers uh, down my lineage. I have a, you know, there was a uh, army trophy, military trophy. And I think it's both my uncle and my great uncle's names are engraved on it. I've seen that. And then I've got, I have a poster of, of uh, my great uncle, I believe, uh, who is a boxer and he's kind of big on the, uh, the kind of plastered on the main event of the poster. So it, boxing specifically is something that kind of runs in my family. And uh, so, yeah, I've been doing that since I was five. Uh, I got into it. I got really into it. And I got into, I eventually transitioned from karate because karate was a little too easy for me. Uh, oh, I don't interesting. like interesting. Interesting. No, I don't, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, um, typical karate especially with point fighting the way they the way they point fight where um are, do you know much about karate yeah I yeah i know a know. decent amount okay but it sounds like so you do you know, know do you so you know non do you know non-contact karate do you know how that works yeah 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 yes i do not like that i think the that is best used as a training exercise and nothing else yeah. so from there i transitioned on to uh muay thai actually which is an uh, another uh, thai boxing uh, right yeah 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 another martial art that really is close to my heart and um that was brutal. But around the age of 10, I uh, wanted to compete. And there's no such thing as amateur Muay Thai. Uh, and you can't turn pro at the age really? of 10. So yeah, so I transferred over into Olympic style boxing. And I've been doing that ever since. Uh, in terms of accolades, I have in terms of 
pure Olympic boxing accolades. I am a level three certified boxing coach, which means I can coach at a national level. I do oh plan to get my level four, but you need to have a university degree for that, which I do. So I plan to eventually when they plan to offer, and I don't know when they ever will because uh, the organi- boxing organizations are corrupt as all hell. I have stories of how difficult it was for me to get my level three. I had to fly to a different province just to take tests for it because they just weren't offering it in my province. Uh, but yeah, so uh, level three, so my level four would allow me to coach at a Olympic level. Currently, I can coach at a national level. I am a certified boxing official, meaning I can officiate matches, which means I can judge matches. I can be one of those guys sitting on the uh, side of the ring, kind of going, who, who's going to win the fight? I have... so cool, dude. That is yeah, so I've cool. <laughs> been i've trained martial arts in china i have trained muay thai and boxing in thailand i have been all over the united states i've been main event in hawaii multiple times one of which was where i fought a hawaii state champion i sparred i went to puerto vallarta in mexico and i don't know the state but i sparred the state champion there Uh, i've been to ringside multiple times that's actually what this shirt is i put it on because it's the closest thing to like old-timey boxing in terms of a shirt that i have so i was gonna say i wish i had some apparel as well but i have nothing boxing so i was like so that this is like a brief kind this is like an old-timey boxing shirt because it's meant to kind of symbolize that like old you know style of boxing so then outside of the the boxing experience so then just also just you generally as a person like who Mm -hmm. who really are you and like what especially with your channel too like what do you set out to do and be and like who do you want to project yourself as to the world um i don't know i don't like boxing's a big part of who i am obviously yeah. oh, like sure. it's, again I've, I've spent most of my life in the gym like i i and that's what, that's something that i'd like to talk about at some point is the is the sheer amount of sacrifice that it takes to do what i do and the sheer amount of sacrifice in terms of everything like i've sacrificed literally to get to the top and I mean everything everything was second to boxing school relationships both uh, platonic and romantic mental physical and emotional health every I sacrificed everything to get to the top and people don't truly understand what that means I tr- I no, and, and I, I currently train six days a week and even on my rest days I try to at least go for a walk or go for a light jog back when I was still competing because again we can't compete now which really sucks I miss sparring oh, so dude, I can't much. imagine what that's like for you yeah <laughs> I miss sparring like, so much yeah. it's because it, but when I spar when I box that's when I feel alive like it's this it's this amazing feeling of like it, you come alive there's a sensation that washes over you and it's just like this is what I love but um when I was uh, competing, uh, especially when I was in school, I was training three hours a day, right? Three to six, actually, depending on oh, whether wow. or not it was a weekend or not. And I would get home at five o'clock and I would be in bed by nine. So do the math. I would get home. I would train. And I, that would leave me with one hour to shower, eat homework and time for myself. Oh, and like my. people do not understand the sheer amount of sacrifice it takes to do what I do. How do you feel about just Rocky and the Rocky franchise as a whole? And like, I'm assuming you've drawn some inspiration, but of course, if you, yeah. And then just, just how do you, how do you feel about it overall? What is your general relationship to the franchise? Um, I love the franchise, honestly. Um, uh, I think it gets a lot right. Obviously the boxing's theatrical, Uh, you know, Brock blocks 90% of the punches with his head and uh, (laughs) you know, he, he, you know, they're, they're swinging like this, but actually from a movie perspective, there's a reason for that. Um, and I actually watched a video about it. It's because boxing on a technical level isn't interesting to watch, um, especially for like, and, and on, well, not on a technical level, boxing on a theatrical level isn't interesting to watch because when you watch uh, um, a uh, practical martial art compared to a more theatrical martial art, it's very quick. You're, all your movements are um, efficient. Because, and I've said this a ton, in the ring, energy is a very limited resource. You will run out of it. So one of the best pieces of advice I was ever given from any boxer ever was move with purpose. If you are doing something, you need to have a reason for it because otherwise you are wasting energy, right? So everything is quick and fast and you need, and everything you do is efficient. But if you're watching two boxers, obviously it's a lot more interesting because there's a technical aspect of it. But from a theatrical aspect, there's, there's no flair. It's because it's... It's, it's not meant to be flashy, right? So the reason why the Rocky franchise does this and this is because it's a lot flashier. 
as opposed to something like, well, I mean, because what looks cooler when you when you have the guy and you he pushes him back, does this and this and this, right? What looks cooler for the camera, that or this? Right. No, that's and honestly, I feel like that applies to a lot of just sports movies in general. I feel like yeah. a lot of like legit sports, oh. they don't they don't lend themselves as well to like the theatrics from like a filmmaking standpoint. Obviously, exactly. it's entertaining if you're a sports spectator. But for some reason, when you incorporate the cameras and the angles and the cuts and everything, you want it to be a little more boom. So yeah, that, exactly. That I don't really fault it for the necessarily bad boxing because it actually portrays a lot of the mentality and the mindset incredibly Pretty, well. Yeah, I bet. Just yeah, here in the way incredibly that well. Out. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah, incredibly, incredibly well. What I like about the movies in general, because I'm also a English literature major. Yeah. So what I like them from the movies from a story perspective is just how it is literally just one man's life and how it generally it's a very realistic portrayal give or take right yeah, yeah. within take. reason it always yeah, yeah within reason of always one man's life mm -hmm. you just see the whole you see the ups you see the downs and you see like you got that right all these different things my favorite movie in the franchise is rocky six rocky balboa because i think it's just the perfect bookend of the series i like the melancholic tone i it just feels the most real and there are moments in that it does movie feel very that, real yeah that, that touched me personally where he he talks about how like things weren't necessarily supposed to be this difficult you know and like where did everybody go and you know i'm, I'm here now and i'm looking back and you know where did it what happened to everyone where, where is everyone life was supposed to be better than this and to me i i really resonated with that um and so for me like that that is one of my favorite movies in the franchise i also obviously love the first one because what i love is everyone's been rocky at some point in their life everyone's been the underdog. down on their luck loser idiot that nobody's ever given a chance or thought could amount to anything and i like how realistic it is in the sense that he doesn't win uh but it doesn't yeah, really matter yeah it doesn't matter if he wins or not he he's had a goal and he set out to achieve it on his own it there, there's a lot of that i draw inspiration from that because um at the end of the day one of my favorite I mean, it's one of the best quotes in the series when he talks about how, like, uh, the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's, it's, it's in Rocky Six. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. Not you, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and, and keep moving keep forward, moving how much forward. you can take and keep moving forward. Yeah. yeah. And, that's a, and that's the mentality I take with me to life because at the end of the day, uh, I, I see life as a boxing metaphor, right? I'm in a fight with life and I'm going to lose at the end of the day. And this is a theme in actually Rocky V. Uh, I will lose everything. I will lose my friends, my family, my loved ones, my health, and eventually my life. And you can't beat life life is undefeated time wins no matter what but it's not about winning or losing it's about going the distance i want to go the distance with life i want to take things as far as i can and i want to hear the and however long that is i want to hear that bell and i won't give up until that bell is rung whenever that whenever my time may come i want to be able to look back on my life and say i went the distance and that's a mentality that you can see in the Rocky franchise. Like, I think it does a really good job of portraying the mentalities of a lot of fighters. You know, you have, if, if we're going throughout franchise wide, right, you have the kind of more tough, brutal brawler that Rocky is, but with a lot of heart, right? And, and there's a lot of fighters like that who, and, and sometimes heart can overcome, right? He, beat, he did beat Apollo. Uh, and sometimes heart isn't enough. In the first fight, Hart wasn't enough. Apollo was just simply a better boxer, right? And and Rocky's heart was not enough to beat him. But later on, he, he trained, he got a little bit better as a fighter and he overcame. And then you have like someone who's got a little bit more of a Muhammad Ali style of fighting instead of rushing in and trying to brawl, he, he prefers to stay back and jab. And he, he's got that champion mentality of wanting to stay on top no matter what. You have people like Ivan Drago who believe they were invincible until they bled, right? The, the famous Avengers quote, you make God bleed and people will stop believing in him. The, yeah, uh, thank you for that Avengers quote, love it. Yeah, the, the scene from that movie that still gives me goosebumps is when Duke, the trainer says, you cut him, you hurt him. He's not a machine, he's a man. 
right? And that is the whole you made God bleed moment. It is. Because at that point, Drago was this unbeatable monster of a man. So, yeah, you, you touched on some things in regards to, like, um, the accuracy. But I want to know a little bit more about... So the training in the movies has been shown to be super diverse. Like, they, he, Rocky oh, does, yeah. like, basically everything, you know? Outside, yeah. Outside of just, like, all the boxing work and the sparring and the back. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does, you know, there's lots of weight training. There's lots of just... Swing running. Cardio. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, like... What's your take? And I guess we could also get, a, I mean, they don't do that much of this in the movies, like in terms of uh, nutrition and dieting, but like, I guess just what's your general take on how the training for the fights is depicted and like how necessary do you think it all is? And like, yada, 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 um, as well fine. as- Fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Fine, really. Um, a lot of it reflects the times. The drinking raw eggs is certainly a reflection of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, I, I see no real problems with the training. Um, I'm just trying to go back and remember like what he did for specific things. Like again, chasing a chicken is something that I don't really yeah. have <laughs> ever seen everyone do. But no, I, I understand the point of it. And yes, like really when it comes to training, it's really mainly what the boxers want to do. Um, like I've done a ton of different stuff over the years. Like one of the one of the most difficult things I ever did when training for a fight was a 10K run with five pound fist weights and ankle weights strapped to me um that sounds horrendous but amazing at the same time yeah uh, I've, I've done a lot you know you do wind sprints and there's a bunch of different stuff uh that i've done for training you know the, the swimming is a good one uh, again the wind sprints are fine obviously running um sparring and everything like when it comes to how you want to train it's very indiv- individualistic there's no real um golden rule kind of thing yeah exactly even especially like chopping down the tree in rocky four i'm pretty yeah, sure there's a reference yeah, yeah. to ali himself who used to do that right yeah just for, I believe you know, the core, gener- like generating power through your punches i'm sure yeah well hook. especially for the hook yeah for the hook for sure yeah right so yeah like i'm like in reference to ali i'm, I'm trying to think of like and but and again like there, there's all and then I, I can't really say a bunch because a lot of them are very generic stuff like if you go later on you have like tire swings and like he, he's he got the sledgehammer doing like yep. hitting the tire with the sledgehammer to build up the shoulders and bag work and like yeah so punching the meat is a funny one um i i can't really speak too much on that i have never done it <laughs> but um I, i'd love to at some point if yeah, i was gonna say yeah like, it could happen like if i if i could if i ever got the opportunity i would definitely take it just to say that i did it um but really even punching the meat, like just bag work, it, it's just heavy bag work in terms of, you know, you're, you're punching something else. I mean, I guess, I think the theory back in the movie is that he's getting used to like hitting a body that's like yeah, way more strong than a human. Yeah, more like tissue and stuff instead of- Yeah, like, and, and, it's, and it's the more muscle than a human, cause you know, obviously a cow is built differently than a human. So, you know, if he, you know, if he, he can hurt the cow, then he can hurt Apollo, which actually I find interesting. I, I just noticed this because I remember when he first starts punching the carcass, Polly notes that you're going to break the ribs. Yep. And he actually yep. does. He actually does do that to Apollo. He breaks Apollo's ribs. So there's there's another bit of foreshadowing. I just Yo, realized that. Oh, yeah, dude. So the training pays off. Oh, my God. I didn't even make that connection. Yeah. That's amazing. One of my favorite uh, depictions of the Rocky movies, in, and it was actually an impromptu scene. He goes into the, into the ring and he's just kind of looking around and he sees his poster and he's like, my shorts are wrong. Uh, that wasn't actually planned. The, uh, the uh, props department screwed up and they didn't have the budget to fix it. So Stallone on the fly wrote that scene in and it's perfect for the theme of the movie because that's when he realizes that he can't win. He because he talks to the promoter and he goes, hey, my shorts are wrong. And the promoter looks at him and goes, ah, it doesn't matter, does it, Rocky? I'm sure you'll give us a great show. And that's when he realizes, like, it, it doesn't matter. I, I can't win. This guy's not, I, I, I'm going up against the heavyweight champ of the world. No one thinks I can win this. Um, that's beautiful. And that's when he resolves himself to at least go the distance. It's, it's a beautiful scene. So Rocky Five is, in a way, I mean, I'm setting it up for the people. Like the bastard child of the franchise? In, in a sense, yeah. It's not like it's completely, absolutely maligned and hated and such, but it's... it's- I do have problems with the movie. I do think, like, especially among the original, um, like, the original six movies, 
uh, that it is by far the weakest, but I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people get make it out to be. Things rarely are, yeah. Things are rarely as bad as they're made out to be. Yeah. But yeah, if you just wanted to even just go in a little bit more, because that movie deals a lot with some of the darker aspects of boxing, if you wanted yeah. to get into that at all. Not yeah, sure. I mean, well, everybody already knows about the, of it. Like that's the, that's whenever t- people talk about the dark side of boxing, everyone goes into the brain damage. It's been done to death. Yeah. And and not that I don't think that it uh, people should or shouldn't talk about that. Like it's it's obviously a risk sport. But um, what I like about Rocky Five in particular is it delves into a piece of uh, boxing is the kind of snake like politics. That are associated with boxing because um boxing is a lot of ego and because it's a sport that necessitates it right like you can't he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right so you can't step into a fight going i'm going to lose because you are going to lose you have to step into the fight believing that you're a god who's untouchable this guy's you know nothing he can't can't lay his uh, finger on me it, it, I, i'm going to move him out of the way right you have to have that mentality right um but even beyond that kind of ego the trainers and the promoters have a ton of ego uh because it's because i i've in the trainers people that have trained me over the course of my life tended to be the people who bragged about my accomplishments you know i've had trainers brag about the shit that i've done more than i've bragged about the shit that i've done right because it makes them look good because they take credit for it right it's like oh i trained him so he it's because of me that he did this and my that that scene that you put in there the where he goes like they're vampires they're they're sucking they they are uh, living off your blood and that's what they do they they come to every young fighter promise them the world and then they suck them dry and then they leave them in the gutter and they leave them on the gutter when they have nothing that is exactly how things are it, it, it happens a lot in, in both amateurs and pros like uh box it's a brutal sport well thanks again everybody please yeah. go follow not dead yet on instagram and also on youtube go subscribe please i mean yeah. I- assuming that a lot of people already are but like yeah uh you know anything else I, i'm want, assuming i'll be plug? linked in the description yeah, you'll, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah you'll be linked yeah uh, yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna so I'll assume, I'm, I'm assuming i'll be linked but if on, on youtube i'm just not dead yet uh i don't know how hard it is to find me uh by the search but if you just type up not dead yet greg you said i'm sure you'll be able to find me at some some way hit somehow and again my instagram is at one not dead yet one anything that's, else that's you want re- to plug? no that's not so it's not really i mean i i may i may have a, a paypal or a patreon set up by the time this video goes out if i do it'll be up if not uh you won't see anything but yeah that those are those are pretty much it i don't really have much else to follow me on so awesome dude well I have to say it again. Thank you so, so fucking much, dude. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, again, the pleasure has been all mine. This has been a great time. I've had a lot of fun. It's, it's great getting to share my experiences and, and giving people a little bit more of an insight as to uh, what it takes to do what I do, be what I am, and um, just kind of give people an idea of what the sport of boxing really is. Because I feel like there's a lot of people that don't really know what it, what it is. There's a, there's a ton of misconceptions about the sport, especially now with the YouTube boxing. So it, again, it's just been all mine. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Well, you have a fantastic night. Get some yeah, you too. sleep. And yeah, you too. Train your ass off tomorrow, which I know you will. Definitely. <laughs> have a good night, man. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too. Talk to you later. Again, a huge thanks to Not Dead Yet for lending his expertise to this video. If you haven't already, please go subscribe to his channel. This dude is a very level-headed person with a lot of great things to say. Fitness is for everyone, whether boxer, bodybuilder, or avid walker. Working out is something we should all strive to accomplish every single day. We have arms, legs, and many other articulating components to our bodies, so let's use them. We should all want to move, as well as fuel that movement with the correct diet. Stallone may have had some rather unorthodox methods in his earlier days, but we can still draw a ton of inspiration from this man as well as the movies that he brought us. Because in spite of the brutal training and dieting ideologies that he subscribed to, he never gave up. Kind of like how Rocky never gave up. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider liking and subscribing so I can make more videos like this as my channel grows, assuming it does in fact grow. Also, maybe follow me on Instagram at tom.lazoric. Let's be friends. Hopefully I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. And to all the Rockies in the world, I love you.